The face of the countryside is changing. New big motor roads are under construction, the bulldozers making deep and dirty marks across the map. What are the map makers doing to keep pace with these breathless changes? Well, here's an instrument that actually put them ahead of the motorway engineers, the tellurometer. It works like an echo sounder, sending out high frequency signals, measures distances of 30 miles. With it, four men measured a six mile baseline in two days in a job that took 42 pre-war surveyors nearly a month to do with the old tripods and steel tapes. It used to take two men a whole year to do the map-making mathematics that these adding machines and electronic computers can do in an afternoon, with a girl to help. You know how you can take two flat snapshots and look at them through a gadget that turns them into three true-life dimensions, stereoscopic vision? Well, the map makers do the same with this machine. Air photographs of mountains stand up in 3D and a floating dot enables the viewer to trace every contour on the map at his elbow. Stereo plotting has made mountains into molehills as far as the hard grind of map making is concerned. Royal Engineer officers and nearly 4,000 Ministry of Agriculture officials are working at full pelt in the Ordnance Survey to record the changing face of Britain on those famous maps, one inch to the mile. They also make maps of town so big you can pinpoint the flowers in your front garden, three bus lengths to the inch. Here's how they get those squiggles which show you the height of mountains. Draftsmen trace the lines the stereo plot has made on wax-coated glass, a process known as scribing a mold. Climbing these hills would be much less work than drawing them so accurately. The hand-drawn maps are photographed, and from the negatives, a whole series of zinc printing plates are etched out. There's plenty of room for a dicky bird to fly out of this camera, and plenty of time. The exposure takes three full minutes. The printing stages are almost as complicated. Each time a sheet goes through these presses, two colors are printed. The ordnance map has ten colors, including the novelty of mountain shading at the end of its fifth trip between the big rollers. Britain has led the map-making world, pioneering almost all the new processes. Today, every new mile of motorway puts some obscure, unknown part of Britain on the map. <laughs>